Eben Byers was a wealthy, handsome American man that many envied. He attended a prestigious university and participated in a golf tournament that would have projected him into the big leagues. However, he isn't known for his skill in golf. He gained fame after poor medical advice and radiation left him without a jaw. Ebenezer McBurney Byers was born on April 12, 1880. He was the son of a very wealthy industrialist named Alexander Byers who owned and created the Girard Iron Company. His family's money bought him comfort, an expensive education, and golfing lessons which led him to compete in the U.S. Amateur Championship of 1906. After winning one of the largest amateur golf tournaments in the world, Byers was expected to become a pro golfer. He would have continued on that path if it wasn't for his father who passed his very successful metalworking business over to him shortly after the competition. Byers ended his golf career to become the very wealthy chairman of this company. Overnight, Byers acquired more money than he would ever need. He began buying large and luxurious properties all over the U.S. and horse racing stables in multiple countries. Through his wealth, Byers made quite a few powerful connections and lived his life in such a way that many people would never get to experience. In 1927, 47-year-old Byers was taking a train back to Pittsburgh where he resided at that time. The train ride was roughly 12 hours long and so Byers bought a very expensive ticket so that he could sleep on a bunk bed. Byers was sleeping on a top bunk when rolled off and fell to the floor. Byers landed on his shoulder and arm but despite the pain was able to crawl back onto the bunk and sleep for the rest of the ride. Once at home, Byers went to see his physical therapist because the pain in his arm had not gone away. The physical therapist decided to write him a prescription for a new type of health tonic that had recently found its way to the market. The health tonic was quick pricey and reserved for people of higher standing, which Byers was. The health tonic that Byers was prescribed was Radithor. Is it surprising that radiation was used to cure individuals in the early 1900s when drugs such as cocaine and heroin were being prescribed to heal illnesses? The answer is no. It really isn't. The medical field has come a long way. Radium is a chemical element that was once thought of by medical doctors to cure and heal. Without getting too scientific, Radithor was water mixed with radium. This concoction was sold to men and women like Eben Byers who needed pain relief and to feel increased energy. Byers took his first dose of Radithor, a small spoonful, and felt a surge of energy. Over the first few days of using the substance, Byers reported feeling better than he ever had. Not only was the pain gone, his body felt amazing. Byers began taking three full bottles of Radithor every single day and this went on for years. He could afford it, so why not? It wasn't until 1930 that Byers started to experience the negative side effects of drinking radioactive water. His teeth were falling out, he had chronic headaches, and he lost an unhealthy amount of weight. In 1931, his jaw disconnected from his skull and went slack. The only thing that kept his jaw connected to his head was the skin around it. Byers had surgery to have his jaw removed as seen in the picture. By the end of 1931, Byers' entire body was beginning to disintegrate. There were holes forming in his head and reportedly people could see part of his brain through the halls. He was bedridden and beyond miserable during the last few months of his life. Eben Byers passed on March 31, 1932. The death of Eben's Byers wasn't for nothing. It drew attention to the dangers of radiation as a form of medical treatment and slowly radium and radithor were removed from everyday practice. Byers was buried in Pittsburgh inside a lead-lined coffin that was designed to absorb any radiation coming from his body after death. In 1965, scientists exhumed his body and determined that it was still emitting large amounts of radiation. Not only was his body still radioactive, the scientists determined that it was just as radiative as the day he was buried 30 years earlier. Scientists learned the radium found in Radithor had a half-life of 1,600 years. This means that it would take 1,600 years for 50% of radium to lose its radioactive properties. Per this finding, it would take centuries for Eben Dyer's body to no longer be radioactive. 